Welcome to Life Inside Hell. I'm your host, Brother Wild Bill, coming to you from inside the most dangerous prison in Central America. It's one of the most dangerous prisons in the world. Dangerous meaning prisoners walking around with guns and shit like that. Um, and a lot of people die here all the time. It's like a big concentration camp. Anyway, this is my audio diary. I'm the prison's chaplain as well as an inmate. I'm serving a 46-year sentence. I'm obviously an American inside a Panamanian prison. Imagine the difficulty that is. So one of the things that I do all the time to keep my mind sharp and to just escape from this hell that I live in is read. I read a lot. And that is when I have books. And my friend, a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, went free, and he left me about 30 or 40 books. About 30. So I've been reading them, and I'm through them now. I'm, I'm like reading the very last one that I had of all of them right now. I'm reading it. And I wanted to review a few of them real fast and like a really quick thing and give you an idea of, uh, of what I thought about them. Okay, so we'll, do, we'll try to do four books really fast right here. This is an interesting book. It's called The Ocean at the End of the Lane. It's a British, you know, it's a British or a UK author writing about a childhood growing up in the UK. It's an interesting read, actually. It's not something I would have thought I would have enjoyed. I enjoyed the hell out of it, actually. It's like the guy drifts into, he starts exploring his past and starts remembering shit that he didn't know he that actually happened. And his neighbors who lived way down at the end of the lane were actually like goddesses, like old time goddesses. And even though they looked like an old lady, her daughter and her and her granddaughter, and they were actually like, I don't goddesses or something. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, so so they accidentally released an evil creature that took on the the. It, it, this sounds like a kids book, but it's not. It's it's fairly. You know, I don't know if it was written for children or not, but but I enjoyed the hell out of it, and and I, I didn't think. I mean, like I'm picking books here that I would recommend. So I don't really know how to describe it that well. You'd have to read it to even understand what the hell I'm talking about. But so the the kid in the book, uh, it's a it's a young boy. He's, he comes back as a man and every time he comes back apparently he comes back about every 10 years of his life to this place where these goddesses live as if they're just normal people they're like thousands and thousands of years old and every time he, they come, he comes back he remembers everything but then when he goes away they put a spell on him or something so he'll forget because it's just too much fucking information for him to handle it's a really really good book though i mean i would recommend it as well it's it's not it's, it's a, not a very long read the ocean at the end of the lane by neil gaiman all right so that that's a good one i'd read i would read that one then i read angela's ashes by frank mccourt i've heard about this book for a long time i remember re- hearing about it when it came out in the 90s um it was on all. It was like you know, it's a Pulitzer Prize winner. Like a lot of people have read this book. It is good. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought it was good. It was. Uh, I actually began the voice in my head <laughs> after reading it. My the voice in my head spoke with an Irish accent. Hey, fucking hell, you know, uh, it spoke with an Irish accent for a month after I read the book. So Angela's Ashes are definitely a good read. It's about a, a young boy. It's, it's a true story. It's a memoir of a young boy who grew up in, in like pre and post World War II Ireland. And so it was in, in that his experiences as an extremely poor young man there in his family and with an, a, a, an alcoholic father who wasn't abusive, wasn't physically abusive, but he was alcoholic and worthless, absolutely worthless. And uh, several times in the book, I wanted to shoot his father, you know. And uh, anyway, so it's a really good story. I thought I thought it was just beyond excellent. All right, um, another British, I'm like on the, hooked on this. Well, my brother, my buddy that went free is, 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 is English slash Irish. So you can imagine most of the books that I'm reading are from, from British authors. And, and like a teenage boy, I laugh every time I say this woman's name. Her name is Rachel, Rachel Hoare, H-O-R-E. So she's a real whore. <laughs> every, time I read her, I read her, every time I read her name, I laugh. And, you know, I'm a poor girl. Could you imagine what, what she went through growing up and going through school? Well, she's a lady. She's an older lady, I think, actually. But it's called The Last Letter Home. Now, this was really good. I started reading it, and I was like, oh, God, it's a fucking romance novel. But it actually turned out to be really, really good. Um, It's about a woman, a British woman, in modern times, like 2018, 2020, who goes to, just on an accident, she goes on a holiday to 
this little town in Italy where it just so happened that her father, or her grandfather, had been stationed and a tragedy, a war crime happened there, and her British, her British grandfather. And she learned a whole bunch of stuff about her family and the end of it's got a real twist in it I don't want to give away. But I mean, it, it's kind of a romance novel, but it's really good. I, I didn't think it would be, I thought it was like, oh God, I've got to, you know, I'm gonna read that. There isn't anything else. I have written, I have, I've recently I've, I've read some romance novels. I would, li- I would not like to, I would rather not admit that. And it's not that I want to read them, but when you got, when a book, you read the fucking book because that's the book you got, right? So there's that. Anyway, so I got uh, this, The Last Letter Home by Rachel Hoare. <laughs> Poor old Rachel Hoare. Anyway, really good book. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Uh, the, only, the only things I'm, I'm, the only books I'm talking about here today are books that I have, I would recommend. There are some here that are shit, and maybe the next time I'll, I'll come around and say, hey, this, is, this was real shit. This book was shit, and that book was shit. Don't buy it. But, you know, I don't know. I'm not a negative guy. If something isn't my something isn't my taste then I wouldn't uh, then I wouldn't knock it for everybody else because I'm not much of a critic I hate critics myself if you want the truth okay and so I, I said the best for last the best book I've written a long re, 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 uh, read in a long time it, this was the fifth book of the Dark Tower st- series by Stephen King it's called Wolves of the Kala I want you to know as fine a book as I've ever read a fiction it's a fantasy story Uh, And it's so, and it's set in this world that Stephen King has created. There's seven books in the series. And so, like, you can think about how difficult it is to pick up number five in the series and start reading it. But I'll tell you something. If there's, I am so, I want that series so fucking bad, the Dark Tower series. You know, if any of you feel generous or something, (laughs) I want the Stephen King, the Dark Tower series. I don't know how to get it here is the problem. I don't know how to get it in. But I want it so badly after reading this book. This was, I I, I just was devastated when the book was over, you know, especially knowing that there are two other books in in the series past this one and four before it. I, I would love to start at book number one and read it all the way through. And that would also last me probably several months. Um, because I, I, I've never read a, a, a fantasy series that I enjoyed as much as that. Uh, and the, base, the basis of the story is that, that our world is just one of very many. And there is a thing called the Dark Tower, which is at, at the intersection of all dimensions and all worlds. And the Dark Tower is about to collapse. And the main character is a guy named Roland Deschain. I think it's his name, Deschain. Roland Deschain. I'm looking at the back of it right now. And he is what's called a gun a gunslinger. And this is like a creed. Uh, it's like a fantasy western. I don't even know how to describe it. There's no, reason, there's no way to describe it, I don't think. But anyway, so there, he's, his quest is to get to the Dark Tower to stop it from falling, stop the world from ending the universe from ending because like and so like he can go between worlds our world is one world but but it's not the main world it's not even the main world actually mid world is a world there's there's like a whole bunch of different worlds you know and so they they go in between them and they like it's it's anyway it's it's so fucking good uh, i i would have if i read the back of the book i would never have wanted to read it I was like, eh, doesn't even. It sounds kind of stupid, but it was so good. It really, really was good. I'm actually reading another Stephen King book right now that I've seen the movie, but I never read the book or the series, The Tommyknockers. I'm reading it now. It's really interesting. Um, but anyway, so Stephen King is not horror. He writes a lot of stuff that isn't horror, and it's fantasy. The Dark Tower series. God, I want those seven books so bad. So if you get a chance, if you want to read something interesting, even if, I think that anybody that even didn't like fantasy would like this book because fantasy is not necessarily my thing. I mean, I do like some things. I like The Lord of the Rings. And I also like, i tell you another series that I'd love to have again. I read once. is the Dune series. The Dune series is a good fucking series. I mean, I know, they, I know recently they made movies about it and shit, but fuck the movies. I'm talking about the actual books by Herbert. Herbert. I can't remember his last name. Something... Anyway, the Dune series, there's six books uh, in that series. They were, there are six original books written by Herbert Walker, maybe is his name? Anyway, they are so good. God, I want to read them again. I'm, 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 I'm looking to read them again. Um, another ser- uh, series is that I've liked. <clears throat> the, um, 
I've talked about it before. The Lied Mouth Crime Series. God, I love that. I've got three of them. There's six of those. Or seven, maybe. I've got three of them. Oh, so good. By, 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 written by a guy named Andrew Taylor. So good. Um, anyway. So, the books we've talked about today. Stephen King, Wolves of the Kala. Go pick up the, the Dark Tower series. It's excellent. Rachel Hoare. Poor old Rachel. Rachel Hoare, The Last Letter Home. Very, very good book. Frank McCord, Angela's Ashes good book and then an interesting and un just just um surprisingly good book the ocean at the end of the lane by neil gaiman gaiman gay g-a-i-m-a-n gaiman i guess this is how you say his name if you guys have enjoyed this then uh pull the description box down or something and contact me or say hey like subscribe all that shit and if you didn't like it, then you're probably an illiterate asshole and you can't read anyway, so fuck you. <laughs> anyway, um, just kidding. Um, anyway, not probably not kidding, actually. And um, so if you want to contact me, there's my e e uh, email, Instagram and Facebook. They're there. The, um, what else? Oh, yeah, there's a book I wrote. I wrote a book myself called Long Live the King Wild Bill. It's available on, in, on uh, Amazon. In paperback and an ebook. Go pick yourself up a copy of that because it supports me. And there's also a Wikipedia link there if you want to know more about me. I love you. Jesus Christ loves you too. Bye.